Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Skull Lake Valley Atoria. Now what connects the British army rifle of the beginning of the 20th century uh, with the samurai sword? Well here we're going to find out. So at the beginning of the 20th century, the British Army got a new rifle, the SMLE, the Short Magazine Lee Enfield 303 rifle. And initially it had a 1903 pattern bayonet, which had a double-edged straight um, blade with a spear tip on it, modelled on the previous bayonet, the 1888 Lee Metford bayonet. And this essentially was like a double-edged dagger blade, uh, quite, quite a, you know, typical European design that you'd find on lots of um, types of European swords and daggers. Um, but what does this, how does this connect with the Japanese um, sword, or more specifically the Japanese Tanto and Wakasashi? Well, let's dispense with this for a second. So you will notice looking at this 1907 pattern bayonet that the tip of it is not actually um, central. It is a, um, a point which is orientated towards the back of the blade. So we've essentially got a straight back um, with a curved front. And actually if I pick up the uh, Japanese sword again, you will see some similarities in the shape of those two tips. And this is something which um, I think a fair number of uh, certainly British Army um, students or st people who study military history of say the First World War or the early 20th century or indeed the Second World War, they know this bayonet, the 1907 pattern bayonet. It's iconic. Um, First World War um, you know, documentaries or film footage from First World War, we see people in um, Brodie helmets, steel helmets, Tommies, um, charging across the, uh, the trenches of, of France and Belgium in World War I. And uh, this is the iconic rifle, the SMLE, that they carry. This is an original example, incidentally, uh, made by um, BSA, I believe mine is. No, it's an Enfield one. Um, made in Enfield in 1916. So this is an original rifle that I do shoot um, on the range at Bisley. And uh, this is uh, an original 1917, I think it is, uh, 1916 actually, Wilkinson example of the 1907 bayonet. Now if I just attach the uh, bayonet from here for a second, not easier said than done, it's a little bit stiff, there we go, and I put the rifle down carefully. So this bayonet, uh, you'll notice is quite long for a bayonet, by modern standards at least, and the the common knowledge amongst most people who know anything about bayonets or rifles at all is that initially, the, because that rifle, the SMLE, was shorter than its predecessor, um, the British Army was concerned that, um, that when they made the rifle shorter, they were going to lose any reach advantage they had, they were going to become at a, a reach disadvantage against their opponents who they might be fighting who it was pretty evident at that point already it was likely to be the Germans. Um, so they didn't want to have a rifle and bayonet combo combination that was shorter than the opponents they were likely to fight. And we've also got to remember, of course, this is in the days of British Empire, so it's not only European opponents, but they're also thinking about, shall we call them tribal opponents, in different parts of the world, in Asia and Africa and elsewhere. So they made the bayonet longer, and most people know that, that the reason that this is quite a long bayonet is because the British Army or the, the War Department was concerned that they were going to have a reach disadvantage with the shorter rifle. But what I think a fair number of people don't necessarily know is because initially we had the shorter, um, uh, sort of straighter, uh, sort of we say spear tips 1903 pattern bayonet, which I have to say I think is a better looking bayonet as a bayonet alone. Um, but what most people don't know is that the reason that the tip of this bayonet looks like it does and looks so different to other British bayonets is because it was modelled on the Japanese Type 30 Arisaka rifle bayonet. Now obviously Japanese bayonets were influenced by Japanese swords. So uh, there was a, a traditionalist, uh, a sort of nationalist traditionalist movement in, J in Japan um, during the, particularly at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, and this was very prevalent during their war with Russia, um, the Japanese-Russian War of 1904 to 1905-06. Just to add also that the 1904-1906 war between Russia and Japan was also pivotal in the British Army's 
um, ethos to war prior to World War One. So um, Russia had been seen as the enemy right the way through the 19th century uh, by the British Empire and therefore uh, by proxy Japan was seen as a friendly nation. Obviously that switched around in, in the 20th century, later in the 20th century and Russia was the ally and Japan was the enemy but um, uh, the British had actually sent a delegation, they sent many British officers and civil servants and officials to actually um, stay with the Japanese during that campaign and study how the war went and it was widely reported on in the British newspapers of the day. So actually Japanese military doctrine and of course famously the Japanese beat the Russians, they're one of the few people that have defeated the Russians in a, in a conventional war um, uh, and the uh, Japanese victory was very influential and very important in the British mindset and um, tactics for the coming war, what became World War One, and it's one of the reasons that bayonet charges for example were so important to the British um, because the Japanese use of the bayonet had been extremely effective and of course famously the Japanese continued to use Banzai uh, uh, um, bayonet charges uh, throughout the Second World War as well and in fact they were very um, effective uh, in the Second World War for the Japanese. So again it all comes down to my favourite word context and you know for, for one particularly we particular weapon set for one army in one theatre of combat a certain tactic might work fantastically. That doesn't mean that it's going to work fantastically in another theatre of combat. Famously, of course, it didn't work so well in uh, trench warfare with lots of machine guns and lots of snipers. But um, nevertheless, that is why bayonets were taken, taken so seriously by the Japanese, but also by the British. And it has to be said, certainly by the French as well at that point. Um, and um, that is why bayonet design was so focused upon and why the design was changed actually quite rapidly in the early years of the 20th century and also goes to explain why the British SMLE 1907 pattern bayonet was influenced by the Japanese Type 30 Arisaka rifle bayonet. So quite simply and many, as I say many people don't realise this, the reason that the iconic SMLE 1907 pattern bayonet used throughout World War One and, and used in fact all the way through uh, World War Two as well by some British forces and other colonial forces most notably the um, the Indian Army still used these in large numbers as they still use the SMLE which in many ways I would argue is a, a better rifle than the later number four rifle that's another topic for another video um, but the reason that the this bayonet blade looks a little bit like a Japanese blade is because it was modelled on a Japanese blade. Um, because the uh, Japanese, as mentioned, uh, kept a continuation of uh, traditionalism in their blade design. So even when they were designing something like a rifle bayonet, they still wanted it to look distinctively Japanese. And for that reason, if we look at the Type 30 Arisaka rifle bayonet, it does look different to contemporary British or American or German or French bayonets, okay? Um, and it does have a Japanese look to it. And many people, because they know this bayonet so well, wouldn't think of that as looking Japanese. But actually, when you look at other bayonets, when you look at the shape and design of other bayonets, particularly the British bayonets that came before this, and then you look at the Japanese Arasaka Type 30, it's very clear that this model, especially with the earlier hook quill on, which they both had in their earlier formats, um, they were removed later on, um, has its um, basis, has its roots in Japanese blades, in Tantos, Wakasashis, and ultimately, I suppose, Katanas and, and Tachis. So, there we go. Believe it or not, you never probably would have thought that the iconic um, British World War I rifle and bayonet combo um, uh, has any connection whatsoever to Japanese medieval weaponry, but in fact it does. So there we go. They don't like it up them, uh, but the, uh, the, the Japanese roots are still there, even in a, uh, even, you can even find Japanese influence in a British First World War era um, bayonet. Who knew? Well, I knew, and I guess some of you watching this knew, but I guess some of you didn't know. I hope that's been somewhat interesting. Um, give us a like and a subscribe if you haven't done already, and I'll see you really soon for another video. Signing off and see you guys soon. Cheers, folks.
Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.